Hello everybody and welcome to my game week 10 team selection video. Firstly to everybody celebrating. Uh, yes, wishing you a very happy Diwali and a very happy new year. Sal Mubarak from me, my family to everybody that's celebrating. I hope you have a year full of love, light and green arrows. Right, uh, so let's get into the team selection video now for game week 10. I actually made my moves on Monday. So been fairly switched off, been celebrating Diwali with the family, uh, you know, and uh, not been thinking much about FPL. That said, uh, you know, I'll take you through why I made the moves I did and what I'm looking at doing in the future. Uh, one thing that's happened since Monday is that Ruben Amirim has been confirmed as the Manchester United permanent, permanent manager. I've been actually reading a lot about him, watching a lot of videos about him and might want to punt on a United attacker or defender in the new future. So I'll be discussing that as well. Right. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's just quickly get into what happened uh, last week. I got 54 points. Uh, not too bad, not too great, but it's been two red arrows in a row and we need to change that. Well, I mean, last week we were nine points away from the two million mark. This week we are 14 points away from the two million mark and that has to be the goal in the next two game weeks. I'm hoping that uh, we get inside the top two million. That's the primary goal. I'm tired of my rank reading two point something something and we need to change that. And that needs to start with Arsenal in the early kickoff today, keeping a clean sheet for a change. It's been so long. It's been 84 years since Arsenal kept a clean sheet. That's been one of the reasons for the poor start to the season, relatively speaking, where I've had the double Palace defense earlier on a game week six wildcard. I got the double Arsenal defense and I just not had clean sheets for the same. So Raya, Gabriel, I hope you do guys, you guys do well this week. Uh, Gabriel is looking like he's in the squad. That said, if he doesn't come in, I know he's got a good fixture, so I'm fine. Lou is coming with a six-pointer. Foden not doing much, despite getting the minutes against Southampton at home. Palmer and Bumo, 10 and 15 points. Palmer's probably been my best wildcard decision. I've seen everybody figuring their teams out to get him into place. So I do feel like I was a transfer ahead getting Palmer on my wildcard. Uh, I got Haaland, who's got one goal as a captain. Uh, I think the triple captains were at fairly unfortunate not getting more than the six points i think they deserved at least a couple of goals and two or three bonuses if not more Howard's again not doing much and uh Howard's actually in these tough fixtures has had to do a lot of hard work for the team which is why he's not been involved now we know in terms of information that odegaard is probably going to be back after the international break i reckon so him playing center forward up stop straight up and not doing too much of the hard work isn't that far away as a pick and then DCL again with a two-pointer, again missing a big chance. So yeah, Ed Nuri with a goal sitting on my bench. 54 points is not too bad. I went down from, I think, 2.34 million to 2.8 million. The gap is so compressed at the moment, you know. I mean, 2.8 million, which is almost 3 million, to 2 million is just 14 points. So I'm hoping that uh, this week uh, does it for me. Now, what to do in terms of my move? As you can see, this is my team. I had two free transfers. And uh, as everybody is looking at even i was looking at mo salah that involved selling two big players now the big player that i was thinking of selling is not erling Haaland because as mentioned on the pod i do think that the fixture that the three next three fixtures for erling Haaland actually suit him despite their squad being on the ropes when it comes to fitness etc i do think that city are good enough to maybe score five six plus goals in the next three games. And uh, now the news came in from the embargo section of Pep's presser that Pep Guard that Kevin De Bruyne, Pep Guardiola mentioned that De Bruyne has made positive steps. So I do expect him to be back maybe for the Spurs game after the international break as well. That said, the next three games are important. I do think the Brighton game is really good for Haaland. I really think the Spurs home game is really good for Haaland. I think the game this week is the toughest of the lot. Bournemouth away for Erling Haaland. That said, he got, he got a lot of chances. And, you know, uh, on Monday, my stance was that uh, selling a Haaland is a mistake and you should definitely do, shouldn't do it. The midweek injuries, etc. has made my stance a little cooler. I said, if push comes to shove, I still wouldn't sell Haaland for the next three game weeks. I just wanted to give my opinion. I wouldn't sell him. I'd figure it out at Captain Palmer maybe this week if you don't have Salah. Uh, and... Uh, 
then the next two gimmicks, Holland and Palmer cover captaincy. It's fine. So that's my opinion on the matter. Here's hoping that I'm inside the 2 million rank. I'm not too worried about my rank at the moment because I've seen people have very swingy gimmicks and I feel like two, three, four gimmicks where you hit your captaincies, where your big hitters hit, you'll be fine. So, you know, I've had the worst end of the bad luck of the draw, where except for the Palmer 25-point haul that I got in Bright against Brighton, I've not had much. I mean, Ryan Gabriel haven't done much. Calvert-Lewin has been a dud. Ireland hasn't performed like he should have. In, in fact, in the last four game weeks combined, Haaland and DCL together have had five XG and only one goal to show for it. So, you know, I'm hoping that turns. Uh, now, what moves to make? The moves that I made, obviously, Salah has a good run of fixtures. And then Jimenez and Vissa and Strand Larson were the three forwards that I was considering. That said, I took the tough decision of selling two good players. I sold Foden and I sold Kai Havertz. And as you can see, I got in Mo Salah and I got in Raul Jimenez. Now, why did I sell Foden? I do think that the fixture run is good for City. So why did I sell Foden? I just think Salah's fixtures were better than Foden's. And I think this season, there's going to be many times where we are going to be posed with the option of selling good players for potentially better players. But there is going to be an equal chance of the move backfiring. And I think we just need to mentally condition ourselves and prep ourselves to sell good players throughout the season because those moves can backfire. Uh, and I, I have spoken about it many times this season where I do like the Brighton fixture for captaincy, which is why I think Haaland is a great captaincy option next week. I do like the Brighton fixture for captaincy, which is why I'm going to chase upside with Salah. That said, I have no problems if people are captaining Haaland this week. I think he's a good captaincy shot this week. I'm just chasing upside with the Salah captaincy. And then it was between... Raul, Vissa, and Strand Larson for that striker point. Now, if I had the cash, I actually really wouldn't mind going for Rasmus Hoyland. He's really high up my watch list. Everything that I've read and heard about Amorim is that the strike, they, they tend to create a lot of chances for the striker. I do rate Rasmus as a player. I think he'll do well. I do like the run of fixtures here. Chelsea home. Chelsea do give you chances. Leicester, Ipswich, Everton, and Forest. Like this, in the next one, two, three, four, five, Six game weeks, he's getting five good fixtures. I don't mind that for Rasmus. So next week also he's on my watch list is Rasmus Hoyland. Amorim is going to be joining us against for for against the game for the game against Ipswich. So uh, we'll see what happens then. Uh, but I had the decision between and people were asking me about uh, is Rasmus's minutes guaranteed? No, they're not guaranteed. I do think his first choice, but in no way can you say his minutes are guaranteed. So that's coming down to your risk appetite. Uh, choices I had was between Vissa. Vissa has Fulham away, which I don't think is a very easy fixture. He's got Bournemouth at home, which is not an easy fixture. Everton away, not an easy fixture. The good fixture is actually Leicester at home. Then again, it's like, so the fixtures didn't feel like race potential fixtures to me. Like I think Fulham, Bournemouth, Everton are three decent defenses. Not decent, but they, they know their business. Then it came to, who? Strand Larson. Strand Larson as an option. He was playing Palace at home. I think Wolves are decent against Palace at home, especially because Eze and Wharton both are injured this week. Then they've got a good fixture against Southampton. Then they've got Fulham away, Bournemouth at home. So again, Fulham away, Bournemouth at home, Everton away aren't the best fixtures. I don't really like their brace potential fixtures in my head. These two are nice. Crystal Palace and Southampton at home, but Palace is an improving defense. You could have gone for Strand Larson, you could have gone for Cunha, but I went for Jimenez. Uh, because he just looks like he's the Jimenez that we've had from Wolves. And in those seasons... He had 25 plus returns. Fulham, like mentioned, are the Joe Pesci Nana Patek. They, they, they are the thing with Fulham and Brentford are they're fifth and sixth for XG in the last six game weeks. They're actually really good attacks and they're decent for bonus as well. So, you know, uh, that's why I went for Fulham because I like the fixtures from an attacking perspective a lot more for Jimenez. I think the Brentford fixture, Brentford have not been pulling up trees defensively. So I like the fixture. This is a tough fixture, Palace away, because they've been improving defensively. Then you've got Wolves. At home for Fulham, which I think is a good fixture for your attackers. Then you got Spurs away. I think it's a good fixture for attackers. Then you got Brighton at home. I think these are good fixtures for attackers. The problem is that they've got two really bad fixtures in 15 and 16, which is Arsenal and Liverpool, where Wolves have a better run there. Brentford have a slightly better run there. So if you're looking for more long term set and forget, Jimenez will have problems in 15 and 16. That's it. I'll play him or I'll cross that bridge where I get it. But I just think there's higher upside or higher ceiling with Jimenez in the next five weeks, which is why I went for him. And then you've got Southampton home in 17 as well. I'm not too worried. 
about the minutes for Jimenez. So that's my team. That's why I made the moves I did. Now moving forward, what are the parts I have? We'll discuss that as well. Just give me a second to get some water. But yeah, I mean, the nice thing about having this structure, I've got about 0 0.45 in the bank, I think, is that I've got Salah, Haaland and Palmer. Now, the advantage of having Salah, Haaland and Palmer is that they're, prob they're the first, second and third most expensive players in the game. That automatically thinks, makes me think my team is actually quite flexible and I can get whoever I want to, target whichever player I want to because they're the most expensive players, so it's easy to dis distribute the funds when I choose to sell them. But am I choosing to sell them anytime soon? I don't think so. Uh, I think Salah is good for the next three for sure. We got Brighton at home, Villa at home, Southampton away. We got Salah for the captaincy against Brighton. I think I will likely captain Haaland next week against Brighton unless Salah goes crazy this week. Uh, and then you got Southampton at home, where again I'm tempted to captain Haaland over Salah. That said, I got him for the captaincy this week and it's just good to have these three big hitters. And I thought it was an upgrade on Foden. That's why I went for him. And I'm prepared to lose points there if I do. So Salah is good for this. Then I, de I decide whether I want to sell Salah in game week 13, where he plays uh, City away, City at home, then Newcastle away. Or I decide whether I want to sell Haaland in game week 13, where he plays Liverpool. Forest, Palace, United. So this is going to be a decision for Game Week 13, not for right now. Because who I want in Game Week 13 is probably going to be Bukayo Saka. Because they've got a great run of fixtures, Game Week 13, 12 onwards even. I actually don't mind, if you're a Saka owner, I don't mind Newcastle away and Chelsea away for Saka either. I think they're good. No, they're not terrible fixtures from an attacking perspective. Newcastle is maybe more difficult than Chelsea. Chelsea affords you chances. Uh, my opinion hasn't changed there. So I don't mind that. That's why I was feeling a little worried. I also feel like Kai Havertz is due a goal against Chelsea. This, this sort of thing is something I believe in. I actually haven't even ruled out getting Kai back instead of Saka. Well, I want to see how they play with Odegaard in the team and whether Kai is going to continue hog the chances because in the last two or three weeks, Saka's looked better than Kai. But he's matched up pace with Saka. I matched up pace with Saka since the second half of last season. And I'm likelier to get Saka, which probably means a Salah downgrade or a Haaland downgrade. I'm at the moment leaning towards a Salah downgrade. Salah is a short-term fling for me. And then we'll see. Uh, what else is on the watch list? If at any point I want to sell DCL, the Wolf Strikers are on my watch list. I can get somebody. I can get a Strand Larsen in for, South, for uh, DCL next week, who plays... DCL plays West Ham away. Uh, Strand Larson plays South at home. It's a good entry point for a Wolf striker. I could get Vista next week, but I feel like the fixtures aren't there long term. Uh, Arsenal are on my watch list, definitely. I, need, I have two Arsenal defenders and I need to get one of Kai or Saka in, in game week 12. Maybe I get both if I sell an Arsenal defender, but that feels like too much restructuring for not much gain. West Ham aren't on my watch list at the moment. They've got two decent fixtures, but they got Newcastle and Arsenal after that. One more, Semenyo owners, after this week, he's a good play almost every week. I don't mind playing him against Brentford, Brighton, Wolves, Spurs, Ipswich, West Ham. So if you're with Semenyo and Rogers and are thinking of maybe redistributing funds and getting rid of one, it's not the worst idea. That said, Rogers also is just playable in all fixtures, in my opinion, except Liverpool away and City at home. So except for Liverpool away, I don't mind playing him against Spurs. I don't mind playing him against Palace, Chelsea away, Brentford home, Southampton home, Forest away. And he's got a rest. Rogers got a midweek rest, full midweek rest. That's worth knowing. Watkins got a midweek rest as well. So, so did Palmer, so did Saka, and so did Salah. So all the big dogs got, and so did Haaland. So all the big dogs got their rest. A lot of people are looking at selling Solanke, uh, which is a little risky with Ipswich at home. Probably the best fixture in the league next week. That's a little risky. A lot of I see a lot of people selling Solanke. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not sure. I probably wouldn't sell him. If it's funding a big hitter, fair enough. But this is a prime fixture. This is where Solanke repays faith for his owners, in my opinion. Uh, I am... Son is behind in the hierarchy of premium midfielders. I have Salah, Saka and Palmer ahead of Son. So he's not a consideration for me, whatever the fixtures might be. The people, the team that's on my watch list is United now. Okay, United bias creeps in. But I do think I want a United attack over Leicester home, if switch away Everton home, if I can help it. But it's going to be a little difficult. Because if I sell DCL for Rasmus Hoyland, I need 0.6 million in the bank. More. 
Now, how do I get 0.6 million? Do I sell Bumo? No. Do I sell the big hitters? No. Do I sell Raya? I don't know. Do I sell Rogers to a 4.5? But I've got Carvalho, so that doesn't give me a seventh attacker, never mind the eighth. So I have my problems. So I have to figure it out how I'm going to do this. Uh, I need to find a pathway for this. So that's going to dictate my moves in the future. I do think that people that are going to benefit from Amorim's appointment are going to be Rasmus. Probably Rashford because he tends to play a 3, 4, 2, 1. And the advantage is the two behind Hoyland or striker are more inside forwards than wingers. And I think that's Rashford's best position or Garnacho's best position. I don't think they're good as wingers. I don't think they're good holding the width. They're good as inside forwards closer to goal. So I like that. Uh, I think it's going to benefit uh, Rashford or Garnacho, whoever gets that position. There's talk that the other one could play left wing back as well. We don't know. We'll see when Amorim comes in. And I do think the right forward role is going to be Bruno. So a lot of people are thinking that Bruno might actually uh, uh, become worse as an attacker. I think he's definitely going to become be better as an attacker. Hopefully in a functional attack. I said it's he's just going to get in the building against Ipswich. And... For him to implement his philosophy and do well, etc., is going to take its time. And that said, you, you can afford to wait on United assets, assets. I feel like if you're getting United asset, the entry point is next week. Otherwise, you wait. Because they've got Arsenal away in 14 and 16, they've got City away. So these are two of the toughest fixtures. So you can see it off. It's not a compulsion to have United assets. Maybe I'll just wait and, wait and watch and uh, that's it. So if I find an entry point... For Leicester at home next week, I'll probably do it. But that said, it's going to be for a hit. So I just have to wait it out. Is where I am, unless some injuries crop up. Now, captaincy. Why I'm fairly confident about captaincy. And uh, why I don't mind you captaining Erling Haaland. Shout out to FPL under the radar. Is that the fixture for Salah is basically good attack against a bad defense. Which is why I like Salah. You see, he's right up here. His expected goal per game is high and the opponent expects it to concede a goal per game is high. So it's right there. Standards as a captaincy option here. Uh, Haaland is also good, but Bournemouth's defense isn't as bad as Brighton's defense. They will afford some big chances though. And then people are selling Rogers or thinking of selling Watkins, etc. I do like the fixture against Spurs, especially because Van de Wijn might not be is not going to be fit for this game. So that's that. So I'm going to discuss matchups. I'm going to make this video relatively shorter compared to my 25-minute stints. Uh, uh, so I've got Salah in there. They've got the highest uh, goal projection. So happy to give him the captaincy armband. Uh, worried I don't have trend, but I'm hoping Brighton nick a goal. Uh, City have 2.15, which is the second highest, which is why I do believe that Haaland's the second best captaincy option this week. Uh, not much else to write home about. Yes, I do have a benching decision between Aitnuri and... Uh, uh, Mikulenko. While it was closer earlier, look at that 24% odds for Mikulenko, 25% clean sheet odds for Etnuri. I think the fact that Eze is injured and Wharton is injured has made me want to give Etnuri a run out this week. I do think Everton will keep a clean sheet too. too though. But I'll just give him a run out in case Gabriel doesn't play. I'll have uh, Mikulenko coming in as a first sub. So that's that. Uh, and also, if you're expecting Wolves to play five at the back, I don't think they're going to play five at the back. I think they're, in fact, going to play four at the back because the game turned last week when they shifted to four at the back and O'Neill mentioned that uh, they were better off playing four at the back, which slightly reduces Aitnuri's goal threat as well. Uh, I've got a pretty good week. Now, if I don't get a significant green arrow, I'm going to put that down to bad variance because I've got two of the best captaincy options in my team. I've got Jimenez in my team and I've got Palmer in my team. So I've got the good big players in my team and we'll see what, to want, what we want to do later. Actually, Jack, Jackson's one on the watch list for later if I don't come into Rasmus, right? Eventually, what's going to happen with my team is once I get done with the Salah fling and if I go down from Salah to Saka, I'll either upgrade my attacker to Jackson or Rasmus or I'll upgrade a defender to Trent. That's a decision for later. Haaland's probably going to give me more money. I'm hoping I see a green arrow. Uh, if you're looking for a cheap striker, my favorite option is Jimenez, followed by Vissa, followed by Strand Larsen. I'm actually not that big on Cunha. I don't know why. 
so that's why I'm not committed. If he shows enough in the next week or two, my opinion will change. I just think that Stan Larson can con- cover Cunha and I think you can save that point one million more. Uh, if you want to sell Haaland for Salah, I don't think I would do it. That's a quick brief answer of what my opinion is on these matters. That said, I am not as against it as I would have been on Monday because of the injuries for City. Alright, before we end the video, quick shout out to Fantasy Football Scout. They've been supporting us for the longest time. All the stats, etc. that you see on our podcast are from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. If you want to become a member, click on the link in the description below. And a shout out to Sleeper. Now, Sleeper, if you've already downloaded the app and played the picking games with us for the Premier League where you're getting uh, a kit if you're joining our main league and three kits a month if you're joining our Discord league. By the way, you did need to join our Discord. Uh, you need to become a Patreon member or a YouTube member which gives you access to our Discord. It's just a great place to hang, especially with the quick December crunch coming. It's nice to have like-minded people bounce thoughts off each other. It's a place which is fruitful for football and FPL discussion. I don't think Twitter is that place anymore, which is why I would recommend you guys to join our Discord. If you just want to support us because we've been doing so much content, we'd be grateful. We do some Q&As for our patrons and members as well. We do some exclusive content for them as well. So yeah, become a member. And you, if you join our Discord Pick'em League, you get access. The top three every month get a Premier League kit. We've shipped out 12 kits, nine, six or nine kits already. Three more are going to be going out in the next week as well. And now they've launched a pick'em pool for the UCL as well, where the top first, second, and third, every match day in UCL, can win prizes worth 100,000 plus USD every match day. Last match day, people won a PS5, a Nintendo Switch, Airports, Airpods, every pool. So it's like, if it's, it's fine if you haven't played in previously. It gives us engagement, a reason to follow UCL, and there's just like big prizes to win. And it's a 100% free-to-play play game. So, you know, scan this QR code that you see in the center if you already have the app. If you don't have the app, download the app here first. Then scan this QR code and play pick him. And uh, that's it from me this week. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I finally get a green arrow. Good luck and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Happy Diwali and Happy New Year again. Good luck, guys.